We're back to more Pokemon like so last time. We checked out on Bellatown. And yeah, as well as it's Abyssal Ruins by using Dive for the first time. And probably the last time too. <laughs> but anyway, with that done, we also checked out the Quartz the last time because yeah, I do think my team is a very good spawn tons of power. So yeah, this time we're going to be checking out Route 14 and maybe the Abundant Shrine too. So yeah, Route 14 has a lot of waterfalls, so yeah, we're gonna be need to come back there with waterfall. I wanna explore the route without it first. So anyway, to start us off, let's talk about some more new Pokemon. Because there wouldn't be these late game routes uh, if it wasn't so many new species of Pokemon. I'm gonna start with Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff is um yeah, a pretty weird normal type Pokemon of mine. Maybe because yeah. So I used to cut the fable, but it's just not as good. <laughs> so yeah, it's got its abilities aren't as good for one thing. It only has cute charm and it's a hidden base frisk. Also a pure normal type, although it would become a fairy type, part fairy type in the next game. So anyway, it is a stone evolution, so I kinda recommend I can recommend waiting until Chicky Puff learns hyper voice or publish, depending on the set, I guess. It can mix attack, which is cool, but yeah. Outside of that, though, it's not the best. Some of its other stuff kind of let it down. Nice and fresh can time, can time many things perfectly and precisely. Anyway, so yeah, let's talk about this. So yeah, again, I recommend lane for this moves, but yeah, just like a wall normal type Pokemon, it does have a lot of coverage. Like the Fable, it lands like, yeah, a lot of moves you would wish for. Ice Beam, maybe get some Flamethrower. Um, Thunderbolt, Fire Blast as well, Charge Beam, Focus Blast, Thunderway, so yeah, you've got your options, and yeah, it's physical options aren't terrible either, let's get like, Wild Charge, and Return, as examples, so yeah. So in terms of moves, it's not too bad actually, it does a decent support list too, yeah, screens are also there as well, mainly light screen, so yeah. Like I said, from the way too. So yeah, it's definitely not got bad for moves. It's just that yeah, I do feel like the yeah, other what or other normal types should be saying do more things more interesting. I feel like but yeah, for the Ekmans, it's also got some interesting options like Perish Song, Wish, Fake Tears, Gravity, and Punishment. Even so, yeah, again, interesting options. But again, I do think the stats do let it down somewhat. Its main claim to fame is, once again, lots of HP, 140, but yeah, low defense is though. 45 defense and 50 special defense. Mm, a lot of my time didn't go up. And then, compared by really bad 45 speed for some reason, their defenses are only average, only 70 attack and 75 special attack. So you're gonna have to boost this thing up, um, even though you have that really cool move form. So yeah, again, Liquid Tower is always a Pokemon that's kind of strange to me, I feel like. On the bridge, fine trainers. It's a perfect picture. Yes, yeah, it does a lot of interesting things, but it kind of just feels like it lives in the shadows of something like the Fable, which has an amazing ability and just better stats. So, yeah. Again, not a big fan of this song, but hey, it does get better with its part very type and also competitive. That's actually a pretty cool um, um, ability to get. But anyway, after that, we have Altaria. So Altaria is, you know, one of those really weird Dragon type Pokemon. Not offensive, not that offensive, but hey, it does use its type to some good effect. Dragon Flying is alright defensively, has the time sort of icy, but outside of that's not too bad. Um, and its only other weakness is Rock and Dragon, so yeah. Again, DC robust type on a Pokemon that is, well, pretty robust in on, in on its yeah. In and off itself, so yeah. I'm gonna see if Arcades can switch him. Natural Care and Cloud 9, Cloud 9 being hidden, are pretty interesting abilities too. So yeah. Natural Care is probably the way to go. Uh, although yeah, Cloud, Cloud 9 has seen some use as recently as Gen 9 BGC, so yeah. That may not bad ability either. Ignoring weather can be very strong, but weather is strong. I need to do the same for you. And you have Poirot, alright. And it does moves. Eh, it gets some interesting ones. Remembering Pluck, it gets Sing. Although, yeah, you definitely want to boost the accuracy of that some somehow. It gets Dragon, that's fair level. Also, it gets Dragon Pulse. 
are not weak either unless you who won are just too strong. Dragon Pulse is also dead too. Um, and Kong God. Kong God is a plus 3 defense boost, so yeah, another boosting option for it. Having two boosting options is definitely something very intriguing about this Pokemon, so yeah. And something kind of fun at the same time. Let's see, alright. Gonna put Medusa here. Alright. And yeah, we're gonna be keeping on using Arceus. I'll heal Arceus too with some movement. Because, yeah, that's definitely quite useful. There you are. And why not give one to Medusa as well. So it's not moveable, isn't too bad. Perishong is also a decent option too. It doesn't really need a refresh because there's an extra in my mind, so yeah. You're the 99 first that I've, that I've agreed this way. Let's have a fun battle. So outside that, yeah, Steamless is not bad. Dragon Claw is good, Ice Beam is kinda good. Blame for a Fire Blast is a great option, so is Earthquake. Um, it's very, yeah, it doesn't really get many flying type moves. I feel like that could be one sour spot. It does have a lot of good moves outside that, so I don't think it's too much of a problem. And yeah, egg moves. It does get some weird options like Feather Dance. Thank you, now you're friends, right? It doesn't really need that. Pursuit's also got kind of a weird option. These could be nice. Hyper Voice is much better le next generation, and yeah, Rooster's actually pretty good. And of course, Rekomi is a good move to the move too. But anyway, in terms of stats, yeah. Altaria is still, you know, just as bulky as it has been. 75 HP. 90 defense, 105 special defense, so yeah. It's never got a good uh, Only 70 offenses and 80 speed though, so yeah. If you're gonna sweep this thing, you're probably gonna need a boost up and buy a lot, so yeah. Hey guys, Pokemon still enjoy quite a bit. Sometimes I do use it as my fly Pokemon, and in this generation, it's alright. But again, I feel like with the number of Dragon type Pokemon increasing, Dragon type mods increasing, you understand why Trace Pokemon together? Yeah, it kind of feels like, yeah, you don't really need it too, too much, so yeah. As time passes, but hey, it's still an alright Pokemon, yeah, it does use the Dragon and Flying typings to some good effect. Again, it definitely does make use of um, both types being decently robust defensively, so yeah. We'll take a per uh, ugly. <laughs> One more Pokemon to talk about here is Shuffle. Well, on the in the grass at least. We've still probably got a lot of Pokemon to talk about coming up anyway. So yeah, Lapras is coming, let's switch into, yeah, Medusa on the water type move, quickly. Anyway, Shuckle, yeah, it's Shuckle. <laughs> Mug Rock type, amazing defenses, 230, and every other stat is barely in the double digits, so yeah. One note Pokemon is definitely how I describe Shuckle, and yeah, unfortunately it's not too great. Mainly, it kind of just, you know, Relies on stalling out the opponent with stuff like Toxic and other weird means. But the ability is just not too bad. Steady and Gluttony both have uses. Gluttony probably less so because of how awful its HP is. But yeah, Steady is not bad because it can guarantee do something at least. And then Contrary is its hidden ability, which is very random. The only reason to use that is it gets Shell Smash, and you're never sleeping with Shell Smash. So yeah, you could use it for a plus one. Defense and hmm, search defense, but yeah, again, that's kind of weird. I wouldn't really do that. But anyway, as for moves, Struggle Bug could be considered on course, probably a must. So, at least he put on some pressure on the opponent. Um, Wrap can trap, which is good, but toxic. Rest is interesting. You can use the heal, but yeah. I was just wondering how much HP you could be healing with a shuffle. You and your Pokemon should have sad thing of losing half and half. Gastras is there, roll out, yeah, you know it's a roll out. Same with Power Trick, which sorts its attack and defense. Sounds good until they realize that, yeah, um, you're lowering your defense to nothing, so yeah. So you want to be very careful using that. That's what thanks sure, so yeah. <laughs> um, let's move the squad around like this, I think. Yeah, that'll be good. I'm gonna be using Keiko small. Well, there you go. I actually made it to the end of this room, so yeah, what I want to do is, yeah, I want to finally go get Waterfall, and yeah, I guess fight you. But anyway, I feel like one of the more interesting moves is Power and God Split, because yeah, those average the stats between the target and Shuckle itself, and there's some interesting properties, mainly in Bell Vows. With Power Split, because of its really terrible offensive stats, 
you can basically use it against the opponent and yeah, completely destroy the offenses. And God's Way can use on your ally to boost their bullet. At the cost of shuffles, obviously, but that's one problem with using those moves, but hey, they seem like really interesting moves of shuffles, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad that they decided to go with that. They I mean, TMs, yeah, Toxic's a must. Protect might also be a must too. Um, and yeah, there's not much else. Because, you yeah, know, you could try using offensive moves, but yeah, you probably don't want to be. Instead, yeah, just focus on, you know, being very annoying. That's the shuffle way. And take of which, yeah, it does get knockoff and helping kind. As Ekmus, those are very good options. And Final Gambit, he need a lot of HP, but it was a good move for Shuffle because um, it could take itself out. And that was good because it could then Stealth Rock and Sticky Web. Both has the same moves and being able to kill itself while the same goes up, that's a decent leech. So yeah. And of course, I already thought about stats. So yeah, once again, Shuffle, extremely one dimensional Pokemon as it has basically always been. But hey, at least that's some interesting things, even if, yeah, again, kind of like, you know, a lot of gimmicky Pokemon, they're not actually good, but at least they're kind of interested to talk about, so, yeah. Anyway, we're gonna go get out Blue Eye again, because, yeah, we're gonna need to... Waterfall. So, anyway, we talk about those, so, yeah, what does, um... Anyway, we're gonna be, be found in Rusting Grass, so, yeah. Surf, Weasels can be found... And fishing, we are talking about Goldeen. So yeah, all that's left is the Swarm. Yanma. Yanma's not great, but it does become a pretty solid Pokemon, so I can't wait to talk about that. Yanma, obviously. So yeah. Again, Yanma on its own. Pretty weak, locked flying type Pokemon. But the only interesting thing going on is that speed boost ability. Giving it plus one speed every turn, that is pretty good. But yeah, of course, if we're going to talk about this Pokemon, we really need to talk about Yanma. Also, has a pretty cool shine, not gonna lie. At least Yom does. Oh my gosh, it's a pretty cool shine too, but anyway. I guess we'll see if this is a uh, pop note. Yeah, but it's cool. But anyway, Yom Mega needs Asian power. That's a pretty good move, so that, but two of them <laughs> in particular. Psychic and Air Sash, or well, not Psychic, Bug Buzz and Air Sash. And yeah, I think before we do talk about that, yeah, again. Bug Flying, they got once again. A pretty crippling type sometimes, mainly because of stop rock. Outside of that though, it's not bad once again, and it's decently good offensively. Which yeah, this Pokemon will definitely show off. Anyway, it's only it's by far worse the birdie, it's Frisk, which yeah, only reveals the hell time. And yeah, we're to also because that is an ability, so that's kinda of funny, but yeah. Yeah, again, you're not using this. Using our speed boost to boost the speed every turn, making yeah, Yarn Mega into a speed demon. He also got an Ultra Ball good, and Tiddlelands is also good, of course, boosting the power that's not very bad to moves. Your Bug Slash, or, yeah, <laughs> Bug Buzz and Air Slash, they're gonna be doing lots of damage, so yeah. Outside of that, you can also use Psychic and Shadow Ball for coverage, and yeah, U turn sometimes could be good, depending on, yeah, the team, I guess. And yeah, maybe Sub G and Protect 2 could also be concerned because, again, they help set up speed boost, so yeah. That's obviously pretty great. There's an item down there. There's a lot of waterfalls. It can be a little bit confusing to explore this area, but anyway. And yep, there he is. The last sage. But I think before we do that, let's fight you. With Kiko. Saying so, yeah, Ekmo is not too much here. Yeah. It's basically moves I probably wouldn't use. They're mostly physical. So yeah. My Pokemon climb many mounts have built up their physiques. So yeah, I won't really use those. Again, I feel like, yeah, the lack of tight coverage is a bit annoying, but with Tint Lens, that's not too much of a problem, so yeah. That's kind of why I like Tint Lens, is the ability to be honest, so yeah. And yeah, you can even use Hypnosis from its pre-evolution Yama, but yeah, that was better in Down and Pearl, where for some reason they made Hypnosis same percent accurate, but then they changed the mind and made it 60, probably because, you know, people like Gengar and even Yama Mecha were kind of annoying with that, so yeah. Anyway, stat wise, yeah, your mag is good. 116 social attack, 95 speed. It's definitely got the power and it's definitely got the speed, especially with the speed boost. And again, it's other stats don't really matter. Again, it's kind of frail though. On the physical side, it's actually a lot better. It has 86 defense compared to 56 special defense, so yeah. And yeah, 86 um, HP as well. So yeah. It's a. <laughs> it's a pretty. Uh, one of the more fun bug type Pokemon to use. Again, speed boost is a fun ability. It hits really hard with Tintalence too. 
very fun Pokemon, it's just like, yeah, normally Gengar is a problem, but hey, this is the post game, so at least you don't have to worry about Yonder being, well, not very good. So yeah, that's definitely a plus. So and that's all the new Pokemon here, but we do have another new area to talk about, new Pokemon. And that's of course the um, Abundant Shrine, which I will go to. I did spell off the beat, wants to become an option. Okay. So yeah, we defeated you good. And yeah, perfect time to first talk about Yon Mega, because yeah, we have you. So yeah, don't want to heal Keiko. I've been going on. Once again, being on high HP definitely helps. And not having to go back to the Pokemon set all the time definitely helps too, so yeah. Alrighty, so yeah, let's talk to you. Is yellow a final stage when you're fine? Green's too strong Pokemon trainer who came to Dragon Spot Tower. Are you not making friends with Zekrom? There is a saying. There's someone in this world, there's someone who understands you. It feels like that person is right beside you, even if you're as far apart as the end of the land at the top of the sky. You know what, I can respect that, because yeah, you got the people in my comments, of course, the very understanding of me, I feel like, so yeah. I feel like, yeah, that kind of connects. I think, yeah, he is saying that in regards to Lorden. As by Lord and his Pokemon understand one another, so too do you and your Pokemon understand one another. Which is my reason for giving you this. TMA Pokemon. I think maybe Omic can use this, I might consider that. Let's have universe about Pokemon and people working together to build a new world. The message is that simple and that strong. The changed the world makes you a hero, anyone can become a hero. As each of us changes what is in our power to change, so the world itself changes. Going to Plasma, I'm obviously the international police, so you must supply the information I request. Indeed, I shall. Team Plasma changed me, but could not change the world. I'm looking forward to seeing how you look to. I thank you extremely. Curiously, Theo, there's a topic on which must be. A report here reached my ears of someone far from here. Indeed, this someone has spotted a person like N at a dragon Pokemon. I depart to substantiate the substance of this information. Till next time, I say cheers to you. So there you go, that's our main post-game quest done. How awesome is that? So yeah, let's head on down here. And start getting more items. And yeah, there's also another training fight. Get the Reaper Cloth, the Iron that evolves Dust Clops into Dust Armor. Uh, evolution that I feel like not a lot of people like because yeah. Dust Armor unfortunately doesn't get enough boots to its stats, but because of the dust clops. And yeah, this leaving the generation that yeah. That's really the case, because your yeah, Dust Clops has um, you like on its side now, so it becomes bulkier than its evolution. Oh uh, yeah, the main thing about Dust Clops, of course, it has higher attack. Oh uh, yeah, that doesn't really matter too much, because even though its move is good, I feel like it kind of suffers in like the stat department. Because it's got like Shadow Punch, that's not great. At least go look at Iron Fist to boost it, so yeah. Anyway, we have another Ace Trainer fight. That battle until I win, I'll never ultimately lose. Alright then. So yeah, let's fight you. Hip. Nabsol. That's not great, so yeah, I'm probably gonna have to retreat from this. Into um, Yokozuna. Unless, yeah, I feel like it's not gonna go for a but I'm pretty sure he is. So yeah, let's just be smart about this. Because, yeah, even though Astral's not super fast, it's definitely faster than Keiko's, so yeah. Let's not take a risk here. And yeah, I was talking about Crypt Build with Absol. Yeah, you want to use, like, the Spook Lens. I think I've done that before. It's not, like, all a really good strategy, but hey, you could try it. You can have some fun with that, obviously, so yeah. Anyway, you can take the Absol good. What's he gonna send up next? And yeah, we'll talk about the Abundant Shrine Pokemon when we actually go with that, so yeah. There's actually quite a lot of Pokemon there, so yeah. Anyway, Dojo. Um, I'll try a Wild Charge. It's probably gonna Draw Peck us though. Like that. What is like Draw Peck? It's not that good when compared to Brave Bird. And yeah, probably gonna knock ourselves out here, but that's okay. Not as good as Brave Bird, because of course it's way weaker, but um, I always like the animation. I don't know why. And yeah, that's the case, unfortunately. Dojo is a strong Pokemon. And yeah, we'll just go pick for now. Sing out War Rain, alright. So you can obviously go with a nice Focus Blast on it. 
may be unnecessary, but I guess we'll see. Yeet was Blizzard, alright. I'll stay off the hail. You know, yeah, he could have ice body, so I could definitely help with that, and yup. We're missing he hill, unfortunately. Is that gonna happen again? Let's find out. Probably gonna go back and heal too, because you know, I don't really have any focus mass left, and yup. <laughs> That's just how it goes, I guess. We're gonna go to the booster. To tank the Blizzard and us go for some energy balls here, so yeah. I am focus blast left before this was actually pretty decent, so you had to come undone at some point. And yes, we got Witch. <laughs> now we're frozen too, so yeah, this is definitely become a train wreck with this war range, so yeah. I think, yeah, going out of heal might also be good, so then I know if I have missed anything. I don't think I have, because, um. I don't think I have, because, yeah. Huh? To my knowledge, I don't think there's any TMs in this place, so yeah. Yeah, we just had to hopefully four out at some point, and there we go. So yeah, hopefully it doesn't freeze us again. <laughs> That's all we gotta hope for here. Anyway, we do enough to take care because of the uh, special defense drop. And he doesn't freeze us again, good. But yeah, uh, something interesting though is if I did have Scald, I could pull myself out with that, which is pretty cool. Anyway. That'll be the end of that war end. Oh uh, yeah. Like I said though, probably wanna go back and heal. Try seven times or fall eight times. No, fall down seven times, stand up eight. Interesting. Alright, let's just yeah, like I said, go back and heal. I probably should cut this too. So yeah, let me do that. Alright, back here. To make it a bit more clear, yeah, what you wanna do is you wanna surf down here, down the waterfall. And yeah, this is where it is. This is the Abundance Shrine, so yeah. So yeah, now let's start exploring this area and talk about some more new Pokemon. This area is pretty interesting, it's home to another legendary Pokemon, but yeah, we'll talk about that later because some of the NPCs are going to be talking about it. So anyway, our first new wild Pokemon is Chimeco, and there's also a house here. It is the great landerist that protects this land. With its help, we are assured of rich soil and proper harvest. Be sure the great landerist's little shrine and pay your respects. Oh boy, this is. I guess it's the home to all the OU places, isn't it? Anyway. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, landerist. That's gonna be a Pokemon to talk about later. Anyway, yeah, Trimeco's first. Trimeco is, yeah, very average psychic type Pokemon. And yeah, depending on you talk to, not that great evil. Also, palm mushrooms. Yeah, we're definitely getting rich. That's a thing, sure. But also, you want to go get this. TM35 Flamethrower. Once again, 95 Power Fire type move. Get it kind of late though, so unfortunately you can't really give it as coverage to your Pokemon, but hey. Some of them can learn Fire Blast too, so yeah, that's obviously a good option as well. So, yeah. Anyway, back to try my It has low attack and to be a Psychic type. That's not bad, but outside of that, yeah, it's not like, amazing. We're gonna go fight you now. Mr. Trainer. Let's compare who's Pokemon are stronger. Mine, but anyway. <laughs> so in terms of moves, yeah, it's got it's many support Pokemon, I feel like, and there's definitely some good moves. Yawn is there, Heal Bell is there, Synchronoise, no. <laughs> Heal Balls actually could be interesting. And Healing Wish too. So yeah, interesting choices right there. Outside of that, yeah, it's TM list is a great. Not many offensive moves, although from the wave is definitely quite nice. And so is Trick Room. Um and yeah, if you really want to use offensively, it does get caught by So yeah, at least there's that. So yeah. Never egg moves once again. Um, you get some interesting options, like for example, skill swap, stored power, future sight. Maybe wish is that too. So yeah, and curse for some reason. And yeah, now we gotta go with the stats. Right, it's pre evo Apparently, it also gets the last resort in training and recover. Recover's kind of a big deal, so yeah, definitely think about that. And yeah, stats again, they're really average. I'm not so sure why, but yeah. It's not like the worst thing I've seen in the world, but yeah, its highest stat is its 95 special attack. Also has E special defense, 65 HP and 70 defense. And then of course, 65 speed attack. So again, the stats are, I guess, okay. It's just that, yeah. Again, there's many circuit types, a lot of them are also pretty good at being, you know, offensive Pokemon as well. So, yeah. 
and was the defensive too, of course. Shameko has some good support moves, so we really should be focusing on we should, yeah, we really should be focusing on this. And yeah, like I said, I feel like there's better options. Even though yeah, Levitate is good, and some of the moves that learns like English are definitely good. Just that, yeah, I do feel like yeah, there are better options for all, all those moves. You want your Pokemon awesome. Being God of War, I think God of War also gets some of those moves too. I think it gets Healing Wish as well, so yeah. You know, Hidden Items up there, so we're gonna go get that later. There's quite a lot of Hidden Items. In fact, a lot of good items in general. Let's get this Hyper Potion. Hey, that's Tremeco. Let's go ahead and talk about Vulpix. Oh boy, Vulpix. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Vulpix normally is, you know, and it's evolution. Kind of alright Pokemon, not amazing though. Hey, let's go get this. Tiny Mushroom, there's quite a lot of mushrooms here. You know, it's Pokemon that, yeah, a lot of people complain about the fact that, yeah, its stats didn't translate very well from the physical and special spot, because, yeah, it became all special defense rather than your special attack. But hey, things changed a lot, especially in this generation, obviously, because, yeah, Tin Ability is broken drop. Yeah, the ability that summons Sun. And, yeah, once again, Vulpix is a very good Pokemon just because it gets that, so, yeah. Same with Evolution Nine, so let's talk about that. Again, if you get that ability, things really open up. But even outside of that, I feel like Nine Tails is at least interesting to talk about. If you don't get Trout, it will always have Flash Fire. Hey, don't sneak up at you like that. Yeah, there's a train like this in Gen 1, so yeah. Anyway, get some interesting moves. Nasty Plot I can remember, although I'm pretty sure that, yeah, you can also learn that as a Vulpix too. Vulpix also learns Flamethrower at a pretty decent level 37 as well, that's one of its kind of nice features, I guess, so yeah. There's other interesting moves like Inferno, Fire Blast, they level up, will -O so yeah, not too bad. And yeah, for TMs, this is where I feel like it kind of shines. It learns a lot of interesting moves. Psy Shot, Calm Line, Solar Beam of course is good if you have Trial, but even if you don't, you have an Energy Pulse, so that's cool. That's mainly it. Definitely some weird coverage for a fire type to have, but I feel like that's kind of what makes Nine Tails Nine Tails. Even if I get it, it starts on the first. And for egg moves, I actually got a decent amount of these. <laughs> like Heat Wave. The main one. Ah, oh, I got lost again. I love this set. It even gets like Hex. Good wood. Um, will of us and Disable. I was trying this and that level. Oh, well, I'll never show it to you because it's my secret. Anyway, yeah, again, it has a decent um, support move. But I feel like that's one interesting thing about Nine Tails, and then we can go with the stats. Once again, it's all about speed and special defense. 100 and both of them. It has kind of low offensive stats, though. Only 81 special attack, which I feel like, yeah, that's kind of a bummer for a lot of people, including myself, to be honest. But hey, with the sun, though, yeah, 81 special attack can start being a lot more painful. Razor Fang is pretty cool, too. See, there's that. Um, let's go ahead and fight you now. A little less. We're gonna go with Nintasha for this. As always. I'm gonna tie the Pokemon battles with the same people, so I'm gonna have a battle with you. So again, yeah. Normally, yeah, this Pokemon's kind of just thought of as, you know, just a Trout Setter Upper. And yeah. Things don't get too great because you get more options for that, mainly Torkoal, which you can also Rapid Spin, which is not bad, so yeah, and also heavy Doom Boots happen too. Technically though, that does help on my Nine and your Ninetales will also get, actually, another Redemption with the Lonely Ninetales, it also sets up a Weather, in this case, Hail, and even lends a Roar of Hail in the same move, loop, which is actually quite rare when the move first came out, so yeah. A Pokemon that likes to pop up now and then, and yeah, it's actually a pretty interesting fellow, not gonna lie. Even if, yeah, get the stats, yeah, they don't seem very impressive, but yeah, it makes up for that. At least tries to, so yeah. Anyway, Noctowl. Noctowl, yeah, kind of exists, I feel like. Wow, surprising mood just that was great. So, it has a good hidden ability, Insomnia. E9. Of, yeah, Tinted Lens, sorry. Insomnia, Kenai, or whatever, although again, Insomnia can see some use. What's in here, I guess? <laughs> but again, it's like, you know, the early game third of Gen 2. And yeah, 
Once against the fine type, I feel like, yeah, if it does get like a regional form, it's definitely getting a different type. Something to make it really stand up. But anyway, in terms of moves, it's not terrible. Lens air slash fill up, which it kind of needs, because this is kind of a special attacker, or special base in general. It has a lot of special offense, so yeah. Even gets like extra sensory and boost this one. Cycle ship is also kind of weird, and this is a dreamy dot. Or even options too, so yeah. Long with moves, not gonna lie. And yeah, TM wise, unfortunately, I feel like it's a bit shallow when it comes to those. It can try a toxic soul, I guess. This is our playground. Great landers, watch out for us. The fact that lights are good, I believe it gets both of them. Actually, mad. And it gets reflect to my knowledge. But yeah, outside of that, it doesn't really get much. Like, yeah, I guess Psychic is good and shuttable, but that's really good. Alongside that, you know, trusty, um, air slash. Then for egg moves, yeah, it doesn't really get much here. Agility could be funny, the fog is much better next generation, so yeah, and well, I guess could be good. Then look at the stats. It also gets Heat Wave as a mood to the move, but yeah, that would obviously be, yeah, we don't have access to that, but that would also be kind of good. And yeah, not also strange work in terms of stats. Under HP, 96 perfect. Is it's main standout. 76 special attack and 70 speed accompany that. Again, it's like, you know, very strange, not too great. It did get better in later generations because it gets hard hit, which I actually kind of likes. But again, the low special attack really hinders what I can do with that. Wow, your Pokemon looks like it's having fun. Okay, then. <laughs> They're almost done with this, sir, actually. You get a rare candy? Yeah, I have plenty of those now. I might even reach level 80 at this point. But I'm not taking with the quartz, so yeah, that doesn't matter. What you got here? Tiny mushroom, cool. So again, yeah, strange Pokemon. I kinda like it though. I feel like there's some potential to make a really cool reach upon not tell because it kinda needs it, because again, it's kinda not it's does feel like yeah, it's suffering from very low base stats, I feel like. But anyway, Stantler. So we got a Pokemon that, yeah, got a new reason form. Stantler did as well. And yeah, before we do that though, here's a cutscene. If you wreck Gret Landers' little shrine, it, it'll cause a bad, bad storm. That's not true. The Pokemon that brings bad thunderstorms is a different Pokemon. No, sir, you got it wrong. This is a shrine for Great Landris. It punished the Pokemon that did a bad thing. If you read the shrine, it can't punish that stormy Pokemon if it comes back. That doesn't make any sense. The Pokemon does a bad thing. Great Lanterns are going to help us, whether it has a shrine or not. You're the silly one. No, you're silly. Hey, wait! This little shrine is dedicated to a Pokemon called Landorus. They say that when Tornadoes and Thunderous are whipping out storms, <clears throat> That damaged houses and fields all over the universe region, Landris made them stop. And that's a story from way long ago when my grandpa was a little boy. So Tornadoes and Thunderous come here again, great Landris may come back. And that's your hint. That's what my grandpa told me. So I got the shrine. That yeah, that's the thing though. We need both of them. So of course I need to trade or do something else, shall we say? Yeah, that's why I'm saving Landorus for way later, because yeah, I need to do some fiddling, shall we say. But uh, with that fiddling though, I will be able to show some other interesting things, so that's why I kind of want to save them later. And yeah, I had checked that the fiddling does work, so yeah, that's cool. I will be able to show Landorus in this playthrough. But anyway, next up is Stantler, which is a Pokemon. It was alright before. Also, TM92 Trick Room. Let's talk about this move first. Again, I talk about this move a lot. It reverses the speed order of things. So yeah, slow Pokemon move first when Trick Room is in effect. And you know what? I want to try this move. It only lasts for 5 turns though. That's one of its problems though. And you can't really extend the that. But I really want to see what Keiko can do with this move. Because as you can probably tell, yeah, Keiko has the quiet nature and is very slow. So, yeah, they actually might see some good use out of this. But anyway, let's go back to Undertown, because, yeah, I've basically done everything I wanted to in this part now, so yeah, that's great. Let's finish talking about these Pokemon. So, I want to give it a go. If it doesn't work out, you can obviously replace it with a Thunder Wave or a Scream. Now, I can see some potential. I feel like the main pushback from using Trick Room is that it's going to negatively affect the rest of my team. 
Which, yeah, we'll see about that. I can never see that being a problem. But yeah, considering that, yeah, someone like, you know, Medusa. Medusa's not too fast either, so against very fast opponents, yeah, the trick one is still be useful, so yeah. Anyway, save it. I'm on Route 14. Next up is actually kind of a big area, so that's kind of why I want to show it in the next part. In fact, yeah, I think next part I'm going to be doing a lot, I think. But anyway, let's talk a little about Stantler. I like this Pokemon before, but yeah, nowadays though, its stats just really leave a lot to be decided. Intimate and Frisk are its abilities. Intimate is obviously a lot better, and Satsip as a hidden ability is quite interesting with its Moople. It's actually pretty decent offensively, in terms of Moople at least. And yeah, it does a moves, it's got some interesting ones. Calm Mind, Zen Hitbutt, and Jump Kick. Walk on the Mind, in terms of level up. Turn and Earthquake can also be pretty good for coverage too, but it also has a lot of special moves, and it's not too bad using them. Wildshot is also there, you can also use Thunder Wave, but yeah, Energy Ball, Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt can also be options too if you really want to. And yeah, it can also support even like Reflected stuff as well, and Light Screen, so that's cool. And yeah, obviously boosts a Calm Mind as well. So anyway, Egg Moves, Mega Horn's the main one if you're using a physical move set, which yeah, that's not a bad idea either. And yeah, there's another way to get me first, also get Disable. Interesting moves. And then we can look at the stats. Again, not too impressive nowadays. Like 95 attack, you guys slash attack, and by speed, yeah. That's definitely not impressive nowadays, but before it was not too bad, especially with Intimidate. And yeah, 73 HP and 6 defenses, yeah. I feel like, yeah, I think the main thing that made me like stand at least a little bit was I did use some Cold Sea as my Intimidate, one of my Intimidators. And it put in a lot of work, to be honest. I kind of wish that I gave it Earthquake because the attack stat was really high. Much higher than I was expecting. So yeah, again, kind of wish I did that. I went with a mixed move set. Uh, it worked just fine. But yeah, like I said, if I gave it Earthquake, that would have been amazing. But it's, it is what it is. Again, Stantler. <laughs> again, not too amazing nowadays. Like, you could have fun with the Saps of a move set, but I feel like that better book about that. But blunt, so yeah. But hey, it is interesting, at least. Then we got Bronzong. So, Bronzong, I quite like this Pokemon. It's not as cool as Mercurus, but it's a very good defensive Pokemon. Mainly because it gets Levitate as one of its abilities. And yeah, that's kind of one of the fun things about this Pokemon. This is the last generation where its abilities kind of were very fun, in my opinion. Because yeah, Levitate meant it's immune to ground, heat proof negates the fire weakness. So yeah, it only has one meatless, and it's five of those two things, so you can basically choose. Mostly you'll go with Levitate because, of course, the utility, and also you're outright immune to the move. When compared to Heatproof, where you're not, I kind of wish it was. Heatproof was kind of like, you know, um, like Flash Fire, maybe you're doing, that would have been cool, but that's okay. But yeah, Steel Psychic is a very good type, considering, you know, disabilities. It's known for setting up the weather, because it gets sunny and rain that's for level up all, so yeah, screens are good as well. Which it should be learning via um, TM. Heavy sounds cool because it does get heavy metal to boost the damage, but yeah, I don't think you need to do that. You can also use like Iron Head and Flash Can too, if you so wish. You just like it's interesting too. So is Payback. The other block is kind of interesting. Iron Defense is a little bit interesting too. And like I said, TM move, TM is good. It gets screens, it can fight back with like Psychic, Earthquake, and Flash Cannon. That's pretty cool. Charable's also a good option too, because it's very slow. And yeah, there's some other fun options like Charge Room, for example, so yeah. And of course, Trick Room, it's very good with that as well. And yeah, it's generous, so no equity. So we can look at the stats. Again, very good defensive Pokemon, 116 defenses on both sides. It's 67 HP, that's not bad. 89 attack, 79 special attack, not too shabby either. But of course, yeah, you really want to go with physical moves, so yeah. Zen Headbutt, unfortunately, I don't think it gets without Mewtwo's next game, so yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. So, yeah. That's a bit unfortunate, but yeah, can use Durable, can use Earthquake, but yeah, you can also just use Psychic. They're only 10 stats apart, and of course it's very slow. Good with Durable, at least. And yeah, this is a book I really wish I could use in one playthrough, because again, I really like that defensive profile it has. It's a very interesting Pokemon because of that. So yeah, and of course it's a very good Trick Room user. And of course it, it's pretty good in VC because of its levitating. And of course it's, you know, access Trick Room. Anyway, Persian exclusive style. Murkrow in black. 
Insomnia and Super Lock Odds abilities, Prankster becomes Moxie, although Prankster is actually kind of funny with Mercury because it learns Plush. A move in Dull Bells that makes the opponent move last. That's pretty good. You can basically, you know, suppress a fast target and then KO them with the other Pokemon. That's actually decent. But yeah, that's Mercury's main niche in fact here. It sees more use of Rusey than Honchkrow because of Prankster. But a Moxie is definitely a cool ability for Honchkrow. It's a heavy hit, alright? The main thing it lacks is speed and defense, so yeah. For its role, but hey, it does get some pretty good moves. Mainly with egg moves, but in Night Sash and Dark Pulse fill up on battle. Foul play is sometimes kinda good, a nasty plot if you wanna go special. But yeah, can, it gets Dark Pulse fill up, like I mentioned. Well, same fight though. Psychic and Shovel could also be used. Although, yeah, you only need Psychic. And he even learns like Thunder Wave, which is interesting as well. And like I said, Quash again, that's kind of Mercury's thing. And yeah, Egg Moves, there's a lot of good ones. Brave Bird is the main one. It also gets some other weird moves like Paris Song. Roost could sometimes be nice. And Whirlwind. And yeah, now we can look at the stats. Of course, Honchkrow, very good offensive Pokemon, but it's kind of let down by the fact that, yeah, it has, like, no bulk at all. Only 52 defenses, 100 HP, and its speed is mid link as only one. But hey, 125 attack with Moxie. That hurts. So, yeah, that's not too, too bad, actually. So, yeah. So, again, yeah. Honchkrow, a little bit of a weird attacker, but yeah, it could be a fun one if you can get it going. And again, so seed support can be very useful. I think, yeah, Tailwind might be something in its arsenal. So, that could be fun with Dull Bows because Tailwind just doesn't last long enough in single battles. Then we got Mr. Evers. Evolves to Miss Magus, also with a Dark Stone. Levitates, it's only a birdie, but hey, that's a good one. And yeah, start selling moves when it evolves, so yeah, what should you wait for? Not much. It gets Power Gem at 55. Parashon at 46, so I guess you could think about those. But anyway, yeah, Miss Magus, I kind of view it as like a poor man's Gengar, but considering that we haven't actually seen Gengar yet, that's not too bad for it. But you can boost a Calm Mind as Thunderbolt and Psychic as extra coverage moves. Obviously, Willis is great. Charge Beam and Thunder Wave 2 are also interesting. It's a bit too fast for the Trick Room though. And yeah, Eggman's are good too. Nasty Pot's there, Destiny Bond is there, Curse maybe too. And yeah, Skull Sort 2 to give Levitate to an ally. And then yeah, we can look at the stats. Again, I like Miss Magus' stats, very simple. Under a fire, switch attack, switch on speed, 60 arrow miles. So again, pretty decent, special attacker. Pretty fast too. I don't know if my speed is no slouch. And yeah, saying with Calm Mind against a special target could be very devastating. You also need to be careful of, you know, being hit on the physical side from something like, you know, power physical dart types. Because I currently fight those off in this show because it doesn't have Dust Queen yet, so yeah. Again, I quite like it. Again, I feel like Gengar is normally better if the if the two of them are around. But yeah. Again though. It's not bad though, if you have no other choice or you just want to, you know, use a fun Pokemon. It's alright. Or well, you know, you just want to use it because you like it, which yeah, no problem with that. And yeah, Honchkrow, Miss Magius, and none of this can be found in the Rustic Grass. And yeah, we still have, actually, um, two more Pokemon, actually no, one more Pokemon to talk about. Slowpoke. And its evolutions can be found in the Rippling Water. And yeah, Fishing doesn't have any new Pokemon, so yeah. That's only Goldie. So yeah, finally we're gonna be talking about Slowpoke. So yeah, Slowpoke has two evolutions. And yeah, outside of that though, yeah, they're pretty similar though. Basically, Slowbro has a higher physical defense, Slowking has the highest special defense, but both Pokemon can really benefit from its hidden ability regenerator. The world's second type Pokemon, which is kind of weird, but they can make it work. And yeah, like I said, regenerator, yeah, it's very solid. Um because, yeah, it gets, you know, um... Being able to switch and recover HP, that's obviously amazing, so yeah. I mean, in terms of moves, they get some interesting moves, like, you know, Psychic, Fear Level, that's pretty cool. Scold is down there also with TMs, Ice Beam is also really good, especially with Slowbro's case, it can really fight off those annoying tracking types. And yeah, Fire Blast is also good, and Flame Pro. And then, yeah, even Bogus Bats there too. But not even Shirt Criminal also pretty interesting options too. It can definitely spread stats quite annoyingly. And yeah, there's some funny Ekmos. Belly Trim could be funny in Trick Room as well, but yeah, it's not really necessary. 
We decided we got a lot better with teleports, but that it also got so yeah. Yeah, got good stats. Again, slow bro, 110 defense. Slow King gonna have 110 special defense, and yeah. They both have really good special attack at 100. Very speed, obviously, neither of those PC, and they're pretty tough to take out if you're not targeting their weaker defensive stat, and even though they're pretty good on that side too. Slowbro obviously can really struggle with physical attacks, especially with Skull, and then Slow King obviously, it can try to balance things out by, you know, weakening physical attacks with Skull, and yeah, going from there. But yeah, Slow King could also be fun with a very offensive trick room moveset. Because it has nasty plots. So you guys you think about that. Outside of that though, they're very similar. So yeah. Although yeah, it actually gets Dragon Tail too. So yeah. So it can get a few moves that it's um also yeah, Slack or two. Don't forget that move. Uh Slipper gets at level 36, so you never want that. And then yeah, then you go all the soaking. So again, both these are great Pokemon. I love both of them. I like using both of them too. They're very resilient war type Pokemon. The Psychic type doesn't really hit them that much, and yeah, they now regenerate, which is definitely a good hit ability. Own Tempo is the ability I normally like to use, um, um, without hitting the blues, obviously. So anyway, yeah, that's all the Pokemon. <laughs> Quite a lot, obviously, because we basically got two new areas. But hey, now we have a very interesting new move to try out with Keiko in the next part, potentially. And yeah, next time you also have kind of a big area. In fact, yeah, I plan to do a lot next spot actually. So that should be fun. Next time we can be checking out both White Forest and Black City. Those are the next areas on our map. And then yeah, maybe taking on the route afterwards as well. I guess we'll see. And then yeah, if we have time, I might actually do some other fun things too. So yeah. So yeah, we're really coming to the end of the post game. Not much areas left. So yeah. Anyway, we'll see what happens next part. Again, maybe it'll just be the Black City and White Forest of the Root off the Beggars we'll see. But yeah, if we had time though, I'll plan to do a lot. So yeah. But anyway, look forward to all of that, and I'll see you guys again for that.